How are you all one? And a very good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the PIM Annual Research Conference 2023, adding value through research to organizations. As customary, we shall commence with the PIM anthem. Please rise. <laughs> Research Conference 2023, where we focus on research for the purpose of value creation in organizations. I'm Tarindu Amarasekara and I'll be your host for this morning's proceedings. Talking of the modern context and being Sri Lankans, as well as being fans of the beautiful game of cricket, recently we celebrated the Cricket World Cup, in which, in a very apt way, they spoke about how for glory, for victory, for greatness, all it takes is one day. But going to a slightly more nanoscale, it's even more interesting when you look at what happens in a given minute in the world around us. Over the next one minute, 60 seconds, ladies and gentlemen, our bodies would produce roughly 120 to 180 million red blood cells. People would ask 2.4 million questions from Google. 25 million Coca-Cola products would get consumed. We would, in general, mankind would produce about 5 million pounds of garbage. 108 humans, human lives would be lost, unfortunately. 116 people would get married, interestingly. And 258 newborns will see the light of the day. On a more serious scale, if you look at the loss of tropical rainforests, 
it would be equal to the size of 11 football fields combined. When so much happens in 60 seconds or in one minute, when unusual has become the new usual and chaos has become the new calm, the value of research gets amplified in this context. That is exactly where PIM comes in. As an organization, a business school that thrives in creating a research-based culture, it is important that we recognize this day as yet another dawn of a golden chapter in the PIM legacy towards creating problem solvers, critical thinkers, and business trailblazers. As Arthur Conan Doyle, the author of the famous story Sherlock Holmes said, it's a capital mistake to theorize before one has data. That is exactly why at PIM, the students, the learning partners are encouraged to take a research-based approach towards their learning, to have a more ontological view of how all these complex things are connected and in order to prepare them to provide solutions that the businesses and the economies around the world require. Today is a day where we would be celebrating the research culture, the research results and the research excellence that PIM has to offer. No matter what flair of research is your favorite one, be it quantitative or qualitative, deductive or inductive, whether you're more into case studies or you're a firm believer of collaborating research and the industry, this PIM Annual Research Conference 2023 would have something to offer to each and every one of you. With that, ladies and gentlemen, please feast your eyes on the PIM Annual Research Conference 2023 Curtain Racer. Next, to address all of you, I have the pleasure, the honor of inviting a visionary gentleman. Someone who has been providing leadership to PIM as well as the research conference with a massive support, who is none other than the director of PIM, Dr. Senaka Kalum Gamage. Dr. Gamage is armed with over two decades of experience in university education management and has also served as a director of World Bank funded higher education projects of the University of Sri Jayawardenepura for over 10 years. He's a veteran in the field of knowledge creation and he is acknowledged in the industry for his significant contribution to academia and value based leadership. He has also specialized in his postgraduate, doctoral, and postdoctoral studies in the fields of accounting and finance. He has provided dynamic leadership to the growth and success of PIM during challenging and difficult times of a pandemic, a social and economic unrest in the country while spearheading new innovations and initiative. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome on stage to deliver the welcome address, Dr. Senaka Kalum Gamage, Director PIM. Thank you, Tarindu. Very good morning to all of you, ladies and gentlemen. Let me also warmly welcome all of you to the annual research conference of the Postgraduate Institute of Management, PIM, PIMAC 2023. Our chief guest today, Senior Professor Padmalal Manage, Vice Chancellor of the University of Sri Jawa 
Our guest of honor, Dr. Dushan Jayavikrama, Dean of the Faculty of Management Studies and Commerce, University of Sri Jayavardhanapura. Uh, our keynote speaker today, Professor John Rest, Pro Vice Chancellor International, Northumbria University, uh, Newcastle, United Kingdom, uh, two co chairs of the PMARC 2023, Senior Professor Jantes Dharmasiri, who is present here today physically, and also Dr. Trevor Mendis, who is joining with us virtually from New Zealand. Uh, members of the PMARC 2023 Organizing Committee, Senior Assistant Registrar, Deputy Bursa, alumni members of the PIM, panel chairs, paper reviewers, authors, and paper presenters, special invitees, well wishers and also my dear colleagues, uh, academic as well as non-academic members of the PIM and the people who are joining through the virtual platform in this morning inaugural session. It gives me a both pride and pleasure to welcome all of you today to this inaugural session of the PMARC 2023 on the theme Research for Value Creation in Organizations. Which, were, uh, which we are organizing as an important integral component of the PIM annual event calendar. Looking back to the PMARC 2021 and 2022 followed, our experience shows that every year we had a face newly challenges. This year it is no different as the entire nation is struggling to find its way out from the worst economic crisis the countries underwent in the recent history. In such a challenging times, especially MDs, the current economic and financial crisis in the country, the conference is designed and structured under the theme of research for value creation in the organization. This year's conference attempt to provide the researchers with a forum to discuss their research outputs, findings and articles and showcase how their work could be applied in the industry practice. Hence, the theme selected for this year's deliberation is extremely timely, I think. The PMARC 2023 will embark the journey of contributing to the existing knowledge and transforming that knowledge into the practice in the way that beneficial to the industry. The PMARC 2023 also acknowledge that the exchange of knowledge is one of the key objectives that will facilitate the sustainable growth of business and the industry, which has been overlooked thus far many traditional uh, research conferences. This year's conference consists of uh, Dr. Roll Colloquium immediately after this inaugural session, and then research paper presentations done by the learning partners of various streams of master's program of the PIM, which will be concluded in the evening industrial forum. Uh, the gratification I cherish as a director of the PIM at the University of Sri Jayawardenapura of what the PIM has achieved as the country's pioneering postgraduate management education institute for the last 36 years and celebrating the extended beyond the closely night family of the PIM. The PIM has endowed outstanding corporate leaders, business professionals, and scholars to the broader society for the last 36 years. Further, the PIM has shaped our postgraduates to face the immense challenges in the contemporary dynamic environment while being ethical and socially sensible to uplift our society to sustainable success. We extend our warm welcome to esteem chief guest today, Senior Professor Padmalal M. Manage, Vice Chancellor of the University of Sri Jayawardenapura. And dear sir, we are deeply grateful for your presence here today, which undoubtedly add the tremendous value to the event as well as to this opening ceremony. I also warmly welcome our guest of honor, Dr. Dushan Jayavikrama, Dean of the Faculty of Management Studies and Commerce, and also member of the Board of Management of PIM, for his valuable presence for this inaugural session. We are extremely privileged to have Professor John Rest, our keynote speaker today morning, sir. Thank you very much accepting our humble invitation to be with us physically for Pro Vice Chancellor International, Northumbria University, Newcastle, United Kingdom, appearing physically to grace this event. I must thank to the BMS uh, management 
for arranging and coordinating our keynote speaker to present here today morning with very busy schedules to deliver his keynote speak. Thank you for the BMS management making those arrangements. I warmly welcome our distinguished guests who are here with the display of their busy schedules resolved to be here with us to grace this inaugural session. It is my humble wish that the PIMARC 2023 offers a powerful learning opportunity that goes beyond the traditional classroom experiences, uh, provide the platform to the foster learning throughout the collaboration with academia, learning partners, research scholars, as well as the industry partners. I am confident that the year's annual conference will contribute to inculcate the research culture within our academic uh, academic purposes. As you know, the PIM is taking a lot of steps to inculcate the research culture within the organization. We have taken steps to introduce the research award ceremony, research grants, as well as now we are going to negotiate with the University of Sri Jayawardenepura Research Council for the future development of our research arm of the PIM. I'm also fully confident that the PIM, uh, P PIM Annual Research Conference 2023 will be great success like the past event what we had. I can stay, say that with confidence why I'm saying so, I saw the immense effort dedication and uh, dedication of the conference committee and the organizational skills that went into structuring for this conference. The PIMARC 2023 would not be possible without the commitment and dedication of the senior professor Ajanta Dharmasiri and Dr. Trevor Mendes being the co-chairs of the conference and the enthusiastic energetic team members of the organizing committee who committedly devoted many days and hours to see this conference successfully through today. And I am indeed fortunate to be surrounded by a family of staff members who share the same vision of contributing to the advancement of management aimed to the better future. While congratulating all the waiver presenters, let me wholeheartedly wish the PIMARC 2023 great success. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Sena Kalungamage, Director of PIM, for those encouraging words, recognizing the vitality of this research conference in adding value, in creating value to organizations, and the role of this conference, which is to showcase the excellence of research, the culture of research excellence we have at PIM, in order to encourage problem solving within different industries. Thank you very much, sir, once again for your address. They say a human could sometimes go on for weeks without food, days without water, a few hours and minutes without air, but not a single moment or a second without hope and inspiration. PIM's many endeavors comes from the inspiration. These are not individual events, but rather one that is weaved into a web of a legacy that spans close to four decades. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, Please feast your eyes on the PIM inspiration video, a glimpse of the journey of PIM, the purpose and what lies ahead. The entire experience um develops you into a professional that can um, handle stress as well as so many other aspects in life in a much subtle and a positive manner. You become that. And what PIM does is to get students to increase their capacity to have that overall view. Uh, PIM has actually empowered me to face management challenges more effectively. an entire package of experience. I got powerful knowledge that makes me innovative. I've gained uh, the managerial skills that I've always wanted. This experience has made me more confident to become a more people-oriented person. 
thanks to PIM, I have gained the confidence in becoming an inspirational leader. Basically, when it comes to public sector decision making, it is very important that uh, the improvement of people management skills. It's knowledge that can be absorbed and applied in any field, whether you are going out on your own or being part of a large firm. At PIM, it's about imparting the right kind of knowledge. And also to go up in the corporate ladder and the academic ladder. So in short, in this competitive market today, I strongly recommend PIM MBA for any aspirant leader. So most of them have really worked in the industry. They have practical experience of how to do things. So I thought, well, probably I'll just give it a shot at PIM, but I did get uh, different ideas from people because they said it's very regimental, there's stringent discipline at PIM, and it's going to be extremely challenging. PIM infuses into you a lot of confidence, which is very much vital in whatever entrepreneurial decision, because you might have the greatest idea, but if you do not act upon it, nothing would happen. It helped us debate a lot of ideas and therefore shaped thinking uh, of, of how do you take an idea to the marketplace, how do you take an idea from an internal culture perspective, organizational perspective, market perspective, it sort of helped put things together. Because the panel of lecturers are so balanced and so experienced, they cover a lot of things that is really help like it's like icing on the cake. My vision is all about uh, always doing something for Sri Lanka and uh, to make an impact in my country. So I think if you want to make an impact in your country, I think I can't recommend another MBA any better. So the education, the management knowledge, theoretical knowledge that I received during my university time. Now I'm privileged and happy to be associated with the faculty of PIM and take advantage of the opportunity and at the same time it has helped me to make informed decisions. You need to ensure that you unleash your true potential to change this environment, to be that change. Rise up, it's time to take on the leap and to change our ways of life. Rise up, no matter what, no matter what the others say, how hard they pull you down. Rise up to bring out the best potential of ourselves and to start believing in ourselves to be that difference. PIM practices three key values. Passion, integrity, and mindfulness. We are very passionate in everything we do. We put our heart and soul into our actions. And we maintain highest form of integrity. And we are transparent in all our deeds. And we want to promote exemplary governance. And we are mindful in every action, every endeavor. We think future belongs to those who create it. And we are in the business of creating the future. Postgraduate Institute of Management, the nation's management mentor, will become a center of management excellence in South Asia. words indeed. They always say, no matter what you start, something big, something small, start with why, know the purpose. It's time to hear about the purpose of this PIM annual research conference in much more depth and breadth. And to do that, we have a personality who has been a driving force behind the success of the PIM annual research conference 2023 a co-chair of this event, who is none other than senior Professor Ajanta Dharmasiri. Professor Ajanta Dharmasiri has a rare combination of being a chartered manager, chartered HR professional, and a chartered electrical engineer. He is an acclaimed conference speaker, corporate trainer, 
strategy consultant, author, as well as an academic. He was the former director of PIM, and he is also an adjunct professor at the Price College of Business attached to the University of Oklahoma. He was the editor of the pioneering Sri Lankan journal, the SLJM, and also being a Commonwealth Amdisa Doctoral Fellow, Fulbright Postdoctoral Fellow, as well as a Commonwealth Postdoctoral Fellow as well, while serving as an independent director of multiple boards. He is the president of the Chartered Management Institute, CMI UK Sri Lanka chapter, which also includes a wide network, including Hong Kong, Singapore, as well as Malaysia. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the PIM Annual Research Conference 2023 co-chair, Senior Professor Ajanta Dharmasiri. Thank you, Tarindu. Ayubowan, Wanakkam, Assalamu Alaikum. A good morning to each and every one of you. <coughs> Distinguished dignitaries at the head table, dig, uh, distinguished invitees in front of the head table, and my dear PIM community, PIM family. And uh, I'm in, indeed delighted to be in front of you as a co-chair of PIMAC 2023 with the app theme, Research for Value Creation in Organizations. So why, why uh, value, why value creation, why research? We had been deliberating this a lot. Research should not be done for the sake of research. Research should be done for value creation. So it reminds me what a veteran social psychologist Kurt Levin said. There's no research without action. There's no action without research. Research and action go together. So what is value to begin with? It's all about economic worth of an organization, the net worth of an organization. So we need to have that value by having values. So I would always argue, you need to produce value by practicing values. You need to have that right values where doing research, conducting research, being thorough with research is absolute must. So in such a context, we bring you PMARC 2023. So I'm very happy we have our Vice Chancellor here, sir, uh, Senior Professor Padmalal Manage, who is a distinguished scientist. And we are very happy that a scientist of world class caliber, who has a rare combination of being a Commonwealth Fellow, Fulbright Fellow, and a Japanese Mombushu Fellow, uh, being with us, sir. So we are honored by your presence. And we have young and upcoming dynamic dean, uh, Dr. D uh, Dushan who is a consumer behavior researcher. It's all to do with value creation. It's all to do with adding value to the marketing fraternity. And we are very happy of your presence, sir, today. And we have uh, a distinguished keynote speaker, uh, Professor John Reist, flew all the way from UK to be with us. And we are very honored by your presence, sir. And then the way you run the Northumbria University and the way you have extended its branches around the globe, including Sri Lanka. And we are fortunate to collaborate with you with regard to uh, research endeavors. So they are all to do with value creation. And let me recognize the presence of the current director, uh, Dr. Kalum Gamagi, who has always been supporting us. And I, and I can see in the audience the future director uh, who will play a bigger role in time to come, Dr. Asanga Ranasinghe. So um, we are indeed happy that the journey of PIM is continuing from uh, uh, pillar to strength, and then it's getting stronger. So it reminds me, eight years ago, we started annual Student Research Day, the very first initiative where we showcased the student research of MBA and MPA. And then two years later, six, year, uh, six years ago, we started annual doctoral colloquium. So let me recognize uh, the contribution by Dr. Akil Javadan, who always prefer to sit in the back, who does a lot of uh, things uh, in the back screen, but uh, who was very devoted with regard to promoting uplifting research at PIM. And then we combined the two three years ago in coining the term PIMAC, PIM Annual Research Conference. Rather than having Student Research Day separately and a Doctoral Colloquium separately, we uh, merged the two together and now we have a vibrant PIMAC. So we ran with the theme uh, research in reflect research, sorry, reflecting reality through research. And having done that, we have uh, enhanced the theme this time research for value creation in organization. 
it had been the uh, case for research i firmly believe research has to be applied and i uh, am of the view that there are two types of research applied research and yet to be applied research so that's what we need to have and it and it goes a long way we have come a long way in the annals of history we had professor john king ravana who had the dandu motor a flying machine and we have come a long way from dandu motor to uh, elon musk to have uh, spacex and we have come a long way from uh, gartenberg having the printed book to uh, zuckerberg to have the facebook all those journeys are full of research contributing to the value creation in organization so to give some glimpses way back in 1959 it was frederick hersberg if you forget the name think about carlsberg so it's not carlsberg hersberg hersberg studied engineers and accountants in pittsburgh usa the behavior of 201 engineers and accountants and he came up with hygiene factors and motivators the satisfiers and dissatisfier the primary purpose of creating value how to ensure that you have the motivators in place you have the hygiene factors in place so these are all glimpses of value creation how can i forget our veteran researcher professor nandasena ratnapala from our own parent university shri jawadanapur he went to study the beggars that is a solid action research he studied the beggar behavior and came up with the rich treaties the beggars of sri lanka and i was told that his last research was about prostitutes of sri lanka and honestly i don't know whether that was action research or not so the whole idea is to ensure that you are action oriented creating value so in so in uh, talking about pim research i can give you some glimpses of our rich uh, research history so uh, there was one who appeared in that uh, video as well uh, mr nihal ranasinghe who did mpa uh, at pim his final research was connected to improving the immigration and immigration department the process improvement where now we have the one day service and many other facilities where he played a key role at that time being the control of immigration and immigration and another researcher comes to my mind prasanna hetiaraj who did an entrepreneurship project at the final year research and that ended up being sar kheta an organic uh, agricultural venture where they are 100% export oriented and which is very much in line with sri lankan future export oriented agriculture and then we had the jayani lokuliana whose final year project was sending messages through sms z messenger first time uh, sms messenger service as a vibrant commercial entity so she is now having a thriving business it's again the final year research so research for value creation and i remember we had a 12000 sample where we develop a, a home grown instrument to measure employee engagement so uh, it is dr akil jawardana uh, professor nilakshy galaitiyav who was with us and now who is in uh, dubai and uh, three of us we coined that instrument we have a home grown testing instrument to measure employee engagement how emotionally uh, mentally physically someone is contributing to the work so pim home grown uh, tool is available and which has been tested which has been uh, validated and revalidated and we published that article myself and dr akil jawadana in sri lankan journal of management so these are some of the glimpses that we can add value to corporates through research so it is not research for the sake of doing research it's all about research going back to the fundamentals and looking at differently as a veteran uh, physicist said research is all about looking at the same way the others see uh, and uh, thinking differently than what others see so we have to look at the reality right now sri lanka the public debt has exceeded 91 billion us dollars we live as if we have nothing uh, to worry about we have plenty of challenges uh, from uh, john in sri lanka but we are very optimistic we are a resilient nation we can have a resilient revival and i think research can play a pivotal role in that revival and the recovery of sri lanka so i firmly believe that research that we do in management which comes under the broader sociological domain would contribute to the socio economic upliftment of the country 
and that is what we are particular about and that's what we are firm about so let me take the opportunity to appreciate all the work done by many people representing many facets particularly the presenters who will showcase their real harvest of their rich uh, work today and let pima 2023 be the best so far and hope it will be an inter intellectually insightful interactively exciting day full of excitement i wish you all the very best let's make the research towards value creation in organizations by making it one of our values so let's practice values in producing value thank you very much Thank you very much, Senior Professor Ajanta Dalmansiri. There is no action without research and no research without action. Thank you for enlightening us on the purpose of PMARC and also how PMARC 2023 adds in to the rich legacy of research excellence of PIM. Thank you very much once again, Professor. Next, it is my honor to invite someone, I think, who was very delightfully introduced uh, by the earlier speaker to this distinguished audience today. He is none other than the chief guest of this event, this morning's proceedings, the Vice Chancellor of the University of Sri Jayavadanapura, Senior Professor Padmalal M. Manage. Senior Professor Padmalal M. Manage has obtained he, a Bachelor of Science Honours degree with a first class honours from the University of Sri Jayavadanapura and MSc from the Department of Life Conservation Science and successfully completed his PhD at Japan's AIM University in 2001, specializing in microbial ecology and ecotoxic, uh, ecotoxicology. Throughout his illustrious career, Professor Manage has been involved in the ecotoxicology, water quality, bioremediation of natural and xenobiotic chemicals, as well as multiple other research in groundbreaking domains while having contributed towards the overall knowledge of science in these specific areas. He has also a very high citation count, earning him numerous world first records in the scientific community. Professor, Senior Professor Padmalal's research publications are extensive and include 82 index journal publications in SCI and Scopus, 29 peer-reviewed journal publications, 343 national and international abstract publications, as well as multiple textbooks, book chapters, and many more publications. Senior Professor M. M. Padmalal's impressive research journey also includes being a research fellow at the Robert Gordon University, UK in 2019, and a research fellow at Sydney University, Australia from 2021 to date, while achieving a gold medal status as the best PhD research student at the postgraduate convocation of AIM University, Japan 2001. With such an illustrious career as an expert, a specialist in science, in research, it is my absolute pleasure to invite the chief guest of this morning's proceeding, Senior Professor Padmalal M. Manage, to first launch the e-book of this conference, the e-proceedings of the conference, followed by the chief guest's address. Dear sir, the forum is yours. Very good morning to all. So I think uh, today is a memorable day. Uh, Dr. Kalum uh, Gamage, Director PIM, and uh, the future director, Dr. Asangarana Singha. And uh, today, guest of honor, Dr. Dushan uh, Jayavikrama, Dean Faculty of Management Studies and Commerce, uh, University of Sri Jayavardhanapura. And uh, Senior Professor Ajanta Dharmasiri, co-chair of the Research Conference 2023. And uh, 
Dr. Mendis, uh, then uh, then he also joined in uh, today by a Zoom. And the keynote speaker, uh, Professor John Rest, uh, the Pro Vice Chancellor of the Northern uh, Northumbria University, UK, and uh, Professor Vijay Ratna, and uh, Professor Ajwad. So he's uh, helping uh, PIM uh, to inculcate research culture. Uh, so then from last few years and all the academic members of the PIM and the administrative officers of the PIM and the paper presenters, well wishers and ladies and gentlemen. So I think uh, again, I want to say this is a memorable day for me as well as you, though this is my first uh, uh, PMARC as the vice chancellor. So I have been associated with this uh, prestigious annual event uh, as part of research council as Dean Faculty of Graduate Studies and the Board of Management of PIM uh, every year since its inception. So that is, uh, uh, so I remember, uh, so then six, five years before I joined with the PIM uh, Management Board. Uh, so then I believe, so I contributed a lot to inculcate research culture because there's a research there was a research culture but I tried and my best to sort of do something for the PIM as a researcher uh, then you know the uh, the importance of research as uh, professor Ajanta Dharmasiri clearly mentioned no action without research and uh, that is very very important and how it impact for the development of uh, of an institution as well as the academic career so it does not matter whether it is management research or otherwise. So then any type of research are very important. I believe that the research output the must always create a meaningful impact and a deep relevance to the world at large and the society and the environment we live and the industry and academic, uh, so academics um, world we work. So when I see the themes of the research conference today, it says about the research for value creation in organization. So I think the theme of uh, PIMA is highly uh, uh, contemporary and relevant. So uh, today it's about uh, creating value in the outside and capturing that value inside the organization. So the uh, be it private or public, and be it industry or academic institutions. To me, value creation is all about creating desirability or usefulness to the stakeholders through uh, consent innovation. So I have a question, is whether we create enough value through research from our universities? So I have an answer and yes. So I think, so we made some progress, especially at PIM as well as the University of Sri Jayavardhanapura. But we have a long way to gain, uh, to go. So when it comes to research that create value in organization, especially in Sri Lanka. So I have, uh, I want to, I mean, um, give some examples, right? So then 2016, so I remember, so in Jayavardhanapura University was uh, the rank as the sixth place in the country. So at that time, uh, so our former vice chancellor, the Professor Sampath Amaratunga, now he is the present UGC chairman, and uh, he asked me to uh, to get some uh, support to to strengthen the research culture of the university. In 2016, so we established a research council of the university, and uh, we had a object object we had objectives to inculcate research culture supporting academic staff and the researchers in the university in this vision so then we started some centers in the university and also we had some strategic the, the plan to increase the research outcome and the to attract scientists and the academia to the I mean the research. So then we, I mean, um, uh, prepared the different type of programs, and then we, uh, I mean, started uh, some uh, 
the programs for our academics and uh, then we appreciated their uh, contribution to the research and finally what happened then 2022 the Jayawardenapura University become number one number two university in the country so that is the I mean the we uh, so then initiated value initiated is very important so just now I talk with uh, Dr. Dushan and the in the management concepts then he said about the value initiation value uh, achievement and value creation and value communication so then we initiated so because we want to give a value to our institute and then we initiate uh, uh, I mean something and we create uh, some programs and fi finally so the communication uh, is uh, uh, the achievement of the university so that is very important now, as you know then we have I think more than 17 national 17 national universities there are a number of private universities as we all aware so all the universities produce graduate every year but the the sometime we I mean uh, not I mean uh, not uh, I mean mark as a brand university in the country so therefore the PIM has a brand and the Jayawardenapura and the some universities in Colombo the Colombo and the Kalania so then uh, the people uh, know about the universities and the international community know about the university so because of the research so then if you don't uh, I mean the inculcate this culture in the university or institute then you may not get I mean definitely I would say so then we can't I mean create a value uh, in an institute so therefore research is a must so that today it's, it's uh, about uh, the creating value so we discuss so therefore so we must uh, the PIM must I, I, I would say uh, the, the future director uh, of the PIM the PIM must strive to collaborate with the University of Sri Jayawardenapura in our side so we are very happy to help PIM and our target is to take the PIM uh, to the next best level in the world so that is uh, as a vice chancellor of the university my major objective uh, to the PIM is that so then um, uh, and all the stakeholders to do to move fill this gap between the current level and the desired level by producing relevant and engaging management research that is very very important we have to find the industry and we have to go and discuss with the industry then we have to identify their problem and then we can start our I mean the preparation of the research proposal so this is the way what we can do and also the country need and then only we can align all our research to the sustainable goal of the country and then automatically we can develop the country so that is my idea so with high level uh, so then we need uh, to engage the management research that's especially uh, the PIM and with high level of uh, public publishable quality and practical uh, applications so there are some research that, that are theoretical that is also very important the theoretical approach is very important and then we have to go for practical but the country need practical ap uh, application via research so we must strengthen the research culture uh, for of collecting and analyzing fact and information with the purpose of gaining new knowledge and new understanding for value creation and organization so the PMARC is very good platform and our learning uh, uh, partners and academic and industrial expert uh, as well as our alumni members of PIM and uh, so they today uh, then you can discuss your research finding with these uh, industrial partners and also academia and uh, some other the parties who are interested in your research and um, also I have seen a uh, rich program over courses of the day with the industrial dialogue at the end I am very sure today conference is very valuable and very productive and you can discuss with uh, your colleagues and your 
academia, senior people and the industrial partners and then you can identify gaps and what you need to uh, develop uh, to fill full these gaps and so on. So I know it is going to be at a lot of value and will be true to our theme research for value creation in organization. So that is that is must. But I like this topic because we need research and then we can create a value and uh, to our organization. I believe uh, as an academic and a member of PIM, that is our responsibility. So then the, this is our our home place. So then we have to create uh, the value for our institution with this note. So I wish uh, PIM and uh, PIMA a great and successful event and look forward for similar initiative, uh, initiatives in future. And I wish you all the very best and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Senior Professor Padmalal M. Manage, Chief Guest of the PMARC 2023, for re-emphasizing on the role of research in value creation and how it contributes towards a more sustainable Sri Lanka in the long run. Thank you very much, sir. Next, ladies and gentlemen, is the address from our keynote speaker this morning, who is none other than Professor John Reist, the Pro Vice Chancellor International from the Northumbria University of UK, someone who has crossed many a seas and many a land to be with us here this morning. Professor John Reist joined Northumbria University as the Pro Vice Chancellor for International in October 2015. He has worked in the UK university sector for over 25 years, working for three Triple Crown UK business schools. He was previously the faculty dean of management and law at the Bradford University, working with a substantial overseas partnership network and led the University of Bradford's internationalization strategy. Professor John was also formerly the professor of marketing and research cluster head for marketing at the Bradford University as well. Prior to this, Professor John was the head of department and director of the Center for Marketing Innovations and Applications at the Hull University Business School in UK and the Director of the Marketing MSc programs at the Leeds University Business School in UK. Professor John's teaching speciali specialisms have been in marketing strategy, relationship marketing, marketing ethics, corporate social responsibility and marketing communications. Professor John has a professional marketing experience in healthcare, toiletries, food and beverage sector, working for organizations such as Rekit and Coleman, now Rekit Ben Kieser, and Kraft General Foods, and also has consulted multiple organizations in these different sectors. Professor John is a graduate from the Leeds University with a Bachelor of Arts in Economics and the Leicester University with uh, an MBA and with a PhD from the Leeds University. Until recently, Professor John was also the co-editor of the Corporate Social Responsibility section of the Journal of Business Ethics. Professor John's research work has previously been published in journals such as the Journal of Business Research, Journal of Business Ethics, Psychology and Marketing, Long Range Planning, Journal of Marketing, Management, Industrial Marketing Management, Journal of Advertising Research, and the International Journal of Advertising. Ladies and gentlemen, with such an illustrious career in academia as well as research, it is indeed a pleasure and honor to hear from this distinguished gentleman for the keynote address of the PMARC 2023. Please welcome Professor John Reist. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I hope to live up to that. Goodness me. Uh, Vice Chancellor, Director, Professors, esteemed colleagues, uh, whether here in the room or uh, watching remotely. I am delighted to be here uh, to give the keynote address at the PIM Research Conference. I've just scrapped the front end of my speech because it's now being covered. Um, but on the basis of my work in industry and also my uh, now 30 years in academia, I can't quite believe that. Um, 
I'm very aware of the importance of links between universities and external organizations because I've worked on both sides of the fence and how valuable they can be. And my reflection would be that there's value to be gained from both sides in both directions. And that research is we shouldn't be arrogant and industry needs to be open to the benefits of research. It works in both directions. Um, so that's just the first point. Before I move on to the main topic for today, I'd like to say a few words about Northumbria University. Northumbria can trace its roots back to the 1880s and has always been known for high quality uh, educational programs which have good links to industry. Uh, Northumbria has produced some glittering alumni including Sir Jonathan Ive, the former Chief Design Officer at Apple, uh, who designed the iPod, the iPad and the iPhone. And interestingly, his final year project was a concept video phone, which probably everyone thought was crazy at the time, uh, but uh, it's exactly what he went on to do. Um, in the last 20 years, Northumbria has increasingly invested in high quality research. So there's a, a theme here uh, uh, with PIM. Um, and that's alongside our high quality education. And in the recent UK Government Research Excellence Framework, or REF in the UK, Northumbria is now research intensive univers university, which stands 23rd in the UK um, for its research, the vast majority of which is internationally excellent. Uh, Northumbria's global footprint touches every continent across the world. Uh, we have global partnerships in 17 countries, uh, uh, sorry, 17 partnerships in 10 countries, alumni uh, community of 277,000, um, and we like to think we prepare our students to take on the challenges uh, of tomorrow. So again, some very similar themes in terms of what we've been talking about. As a research intensive university, we unlock potential for all uh, changing lives regionally, where we're based in the northeast of the UK, nationally in the UK, but also very much internationally. And we see ourselves different to every university in the UK because we're the only research intensive university which welcomes students from all backgrounds. Um, so it positions us in uniquely in the UK. Okay, so having unashamedly promoted Northumbria University, and I should say we became University of the Year in the UK in 2022, and I shouldn't forget that, um, but having unashamedly promoted Northumbria University, I now want to move on to the th central theme uh, of the speech today. And I can't tell you, I was so pleased to, be, to ask to be talked on this theme because I really do believe in it. Um, I've seen value creation in organizations. I've seen really big impact uh, in organizations, uh, but I've also seen really amazing work in, 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 in industry being picked up and looked at by researchers. All the examples that I'm going to give today are from UK impact cases, and that's something that the government requires universities to pull together to show the publications and how they then have an influence in organizations, in society, in government policy, um, as in how they actually create value. So that every single example I've got in here are from impact cases. So how can universities help create value in industry and uh, through, through research? I've chosen examples from across the range, not just business examples, science examples, uh, design examples, et cetera, et cetera. But I think for this audience in the room, but also remotely, the message is that um, the illustrations I've given are essentially about researching universities and how they create value. And that would be the same for the research that's done by PIM and how that can create value in organizations. The world is changing faster than ever before. The future is there to be won by organizations who find ways to turn today's possibilities into tomorrow's competitive edge. In a connected world, collaboration can be the key to success. Universities offer the potential to provide such value-adding collaborations with, with organizations. So firstly then, and this has been mentioned by the Vice Chancellor to start off with, what is value creation in organizations? Lots and lots of different uh, 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 definitions, I'll be honest. I've partly used chat GPT for this. Okay. So I've, I've you know, shown my sources. Um, value creation organizations involves the process of generating benefits for stakeholders. This can, amongst other things, include delivering quality products or services, optimizing operational efficiency, 
fostering innovation and maintaining positive relationships with customers and employers, employees. Ultimately, it's about enhancing the overall well-being and success of the organization and its stakeholders. But I did very much agree with the point that was made about values as well. Values are important. I've previously reached organiza uh, researched organizations, particularly in the US, I have to say, who took the view that breaking the law was a good thing if it generated more profit. And if the generated more profit was, was larger than the fine, they did it. I struggled with that. That's about values. Okay. So how can uh, external collaborations help with us? Well, external collaborations such as partnerships, research collaborations and industry networks enable organizations to tap into external knowledge and resources. For example, societal challenges can no longer be addressed by a single organization. It requires collaboration between different organizations, between researchers, uh, as well as industry, as well as uh, other sectors within society. So collaboration is particularly important. And very often, universities can be a neutral broker between organizations in conducting joint research. So what kinds of value then can universities bring? Because I believe there's different categories of value and different ways of delivering that. Firstly, there's the high quality research, and I've got many examples around this, uh, high quality research and insights and how that can be focused on the problems that industry have got, the challenges that industry has got, or society, or government policy areas, but how industry have got. And then the second one is how industry can cap it, tap into co-funded projects, perhaps between government funding and research, university research funding, in order to benefit from that. And then the third one is through the idea of lifelong learning um, for employees in industry, and how that can deliver value through working with universities and also things like student project teams uh, and consultancy, uh, which can all add value to organizations. So that's the way I've structured it. Firstly, high quality research, applying it to organizations. Secondly, co-funded research. Um, and then thirdly, um, um, lifelong learning and student project teams, consultancy, etc. So let's kick off. Firstly, providing high quality research and insight um, aiming at at meeting the needs of industry and other organizations can best be demonstrated with a life sciences example. And I think this is particularly apt for the vice chancellor because he's probably the only one who's going to really re uh, understand this one in detail. But I will make sure that um, you've got a copy of the speech afterwards. Chemical synthesis, vice chancellor, um, on an industrial scale is usually harmful to the environment as it often is conducted under harsh conditions, so chemical th synthesis, typically requires toxic chemicals and generates hazardous byproducts. In pursuit of greener technology, biocatalysis is rapidly changing traditional methods of producing pharmaceuticals and fine chemicals. So this is research within, within universities being applied to industry settings. For more than 15 years, research from Northumbria University headed by Professor Gary Black and Professor Justin Perry has explored the potential of biocatalysis to reduce and minimize environmental impacts. Through multiple research projects, this, this expertise has been used to develop the business of Prozo Mix Limited, a company specializing in the discovery and production of biocatalysis enzymes. I hope you're all following this. Because just because we're management, it doesn't mean to say we can't follow the science. This new proprietary enzyme panels have been taken to market, enabling novel uh, environmentally friendly pathways for manufacturing chemicals and opening significant new business opportunities for the company. That is the point. Science research applied to particular industry problems, which in, in this case is to toxic waste, has generated opportunities for industry. And now this particular company, as a result of this research, has agreements with 10 out of the 11 largest pharmaceutical companies. So major impact as a result of um, focused scientific research. Next example from IT systems area, improved interoperability and data sharing in the Internet of Things. The Internet of Things is growing extremely rapidly. However, its widespread adoption in industrial and commercial settings is hampered by lack of interoperability between various communication protocols. Northumbria research into data analytics and the integration of multiple uh, protocol IoT solutions has contributed to the core functionality of something called AdLink Edge. Okay, 
Now, AdLink Edge has enabled the company that they've been working with to gain valuable new business um, in terms of uh, from companies such as the Thales Group, John Deere, Siemens, Amazon Web Services. Benefits of AdLink Edge reported by customers include improved in infrastructure interoperability and savings resulting from the prevention of costly equipment breakdowns. And for one of those customers, a breakdown for a day cost them 100,000 UK pounds. Um, and this has started to eliminate these. So in summary, Northumbria research has increased the efficiency of manufacturing environments with new software solutions. So that's an, an, an IT piece of research which has been applied to an industry setting in order to generate value for organizations. So firstly, science one, secondly, um, IT. Third one, an, a um, construction industry example. Transforming global construction sector through build, uh, building information modeling. Building information modeling or BIM, um, if you're aware with that sector, can transform how buildings and infrastructure are designed, constructed, operated and maintained. It's fundamental to multiple government strategies for digital transformation of their respective construction sectors. Research into BIM technologies and processes at Northumbria University has economic impact through the award-winning spin-out BIM Academy Enterprises Limited, which generated 5.4 million in UK pounds in earnings uh, between 2015 and 2020. Um, in summary, Northumbria Research informed digital transformation policy in the construction sectors of 11 countries and un unlocked implementation funding worth over 20 more, 24 million pounds. It transformed working practices for 80 plus UK and international clients. So a construction example uh, in terms of uh, software applied to the construction sector um, in involving training of many, many people around the world uh, and generating income within the construction industry. An example uh, now from design area, enabling self-administered healthcare technology through multiple perspective problem framing. And this is all examples because uh, we, we know that there's the, the, the principles about um, uh, adopting value for organizations. I thought I wanted to actually just go in and say, look, there's lots of examples of how this works. Diabetic, are you listening to this? Diabetic retinopathy, retinopathy a degenerative eye condition affecting all type 1 diabetic and 60% of type 2 diabetic is the leading cause of blindness among working age adults. So a really significant problem, a really significant industry, uh, issue within society. To those affected by this condition, Northumbria University's development of a multiple perspective problem framing or MPPF approach provides a design-led innovation process to help deliver economically sustainable self-administered uh, self healthcare. Application of the MPPF approach was integral to industry partner Polyphotonics Limited production of the Noctura 400 sleep mask, a new treatment for diabetic retinopathy. This non-invasive home-based treatment has produced substantial improvements in patient sight and well-being. The Noctura 400's success has increased Polyphotonics annual turnover by uh, half a million pounds and enabled the manufacturer to sig significantly expand operations creating 13 new jobs and attracting external investment, totaling 18 million pounds. Noctura 400 has been patented around the world, including Europe, China, USA, Mexico, Australia, Japan, South Korea, and Canada. MMPF also shaped the practice of the sustainable healthcare technology sector at the UK's National Centre for Healthcare Photonics and contributed 8.3 million pounds uh, being secured from the local growth fund to establish the centre. I think you're getting the theme here. Real impact, real difference has been made within industry in terms of their profitability, in terms of their innovation, but also genuine impact on society. And so when looking at harnessing university research, uh, so that's the end of that section, uh, the generalizability, rigor and validation of insights is often much appreciated by industry. So university produces objective, um, valuable research um, and it's, it, it moves on from the gut feel of industry. Um, it gives more evidential support to their strategic decisions. In terms of co-funding, I, I won't go into a great deal of detail because I know we're pushed for time, but um, 
it might be that government provides funding for uh, multiple universities in a, in a particular sector to then work with an industry sector in, in order to improve their performance, uh, to support their innovation levels, um, to support their efficiency. And so there are a couple of examples. I won't go into in great detail, but you, Northumbria is involved with a number of these networks to help uh, industry. And the benefits for industry, it, it, it effectively expands their R&D, their research and development budget by getting this co-funding um, from both universities and also um, from uh, government. Finally then, delivering value via lifelong learning and research opportunities for employees and gaining value from student project teams. There's a global trend to allow employees to do research later on in their career. So this idea of lifelong learning, maybe a PhD, maybe a DBA, uh, maybe an MBA, um, all really, really valuable because there's research very specifically focused within that organization, but you're getting the benefits from the outside in, from the uh, universities being applied to that particular industry setting. Um, an example here, uh, Netherlands, for example, in the Netherlands, um, uh, they're very keen on professional doctorates and industrial doctorates. Colleagues at Northumbria worked with the Dutch, K uh, Dutch airline KLM uh, and their management trainees, uh, with two KLM employees also working on PhDs in highly valuable topics for the organization. This work delivered significant value by redesigning processes within the airline. Um, so I, I guess one of the themes for PIM is encouraging industry uh, not only to buy into their research and the benefits of research, but to actually fund um, lifelong learning for some of their colleagues so that they can work across the sector into universities in order to uh, work on their specific challenges. Part-time master's degrees, including MBAs, as well as postgraduate research degrees, PDA, PhDs and DBAs, can all have organizational focused research at their core and therefore deliver significant value. Supervision by university staff is highly regarded by industry as it provides coaching and an outside in perspective. And I've, I've personally uh, coached many, many uh, uh, DBAs, PhDs, uh, MBAs, uh, which have an organizational focus and it really can deliver significant value. Um, finally then, um, uh, how can student project teams uh, work to deliver value for organizations? And this is called improving the performance of small to medium sized enterprises in the Northeast England through Northumbria University Business Clinic. And the business clinic is something that we do uh, with our students um, through BMS. Uh, and it's a, it's a big thing in the UK where um, we have groups of students supervised by academics taking on real world projects for industry um, and, and a, a, you know, gratis, uh, no payment. Um, but it, it gives um, uh, benefits to industry. So research at Northumbria University into competitiveness and productivity of, of SMEs, so small, medium-sized enterprises, identified the lack of specialized and ongoing support for businesses of this type. By filling the gap in provision for growth-focused and accessible support for SMEs, Northumbria University's business clinic has created a regional entrepreneurial ecosystem uh, through collaboration with key local stakeholders. Um, between 2013 and 2020, 300 SMEs have benefited from additional expertise worth £1.65 million. And I won't go into the, the detail of that, or other than to say that they also did a virtual business clinic to make it more accessible to industry. And as we know, there'll be various people watching in remotely here because time's money um, and people haven't got the time to, to, to sort of come through the traffic necessarily to sit in this room. Um, and that enabled greater reach of the business clinic, offering it that remotely. So in summary, Northumbria Research and Consultancy helped almost 350 SMEs increase their sales and productivity, product offerings and entrepreneurial knowledge. This has led to benefits including uh, directly to contribu contributing to a 50 to 70,000 pound increase in productivity, 100% sales increase in one particular example, new products, advertising and marketing plans, creating new jobs, providing capacity and expertise which would otherwise be unavailable. What I wanted to do today was to give an illustration that there are many ways that industry and external organization can work with universities. Some of it is pure research being applied to industry uh, issues and, and settings. Some of it's through co-research funding uh, between government and groups of universities and helping particular sectors. Um, and then also it's through this idea of lifelong learning, um, 
funded PhDs, DBAs, MBAs, um, et cetera, et cetera, um, uh, uh, as well as doing consultancy work uh, and, and using teams of, of, of students. So many, many ways that uh, can help um, create value for organizations. As I draw to a close then, um, I very much hope at the end of this keynote address, which I know has been quite quickly, but I know that we're, we haven't got all of the time uh, <laughs> that I would like, and I will share the, the, the speech and the, some examples I haven't used. I very much hope at the end of this keynote address that you're either persuaded about the power of university research and collaborations in delivering value for organizations, or maybe you knew this already, um, and you've now got lot more, lots more examples that you can use to spread the word. Um, thank you for giving me this opportunity uh, to address this highly esteemed audience. Um, I hope that you have an excellent research conference. Um, it sounds, and I particularly support uh, having PhDs and students involved rather than just being um, uh, academics in themselves. They're all part of the, the overall community, uh, but I hope you have an excellent research conference. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, can we please have another big round of applause for our keynote speaker this morning, Professor John Rees. Thank you very much, Professor, for your encouraging words on encouraging the roles that business schools could play in furthering the knowledge in the current times. And I believe some of the examples you mentioned, you shared, are quite vital, uh, even beyond the boundaries of uh, the UK itself, since you mentioned so many different diverse areas of research collaborations between the university and uh, industry, especially at a time that PFA substances have been found in more than 99% of Americans. Uh, there's more than 15 billion IoT devices. And we also see that so many organizations um, trying to fight uh, diabetes, what you mentioned, and the Singapore Prime Minister announcing diabetes as a national enemy. So thank you so much for enlightening us on all these developments, um, especially from what a business school could carry out for furthering research. Next, to hear from our guest of honor this morning, who is none other than the Dean of the Faculty of Management Studies and Commerce at the University of Sri Jayawardenepura, Dr. Dushan Jayavikrama. Dr. Jayavikrama is currently the head of the Department of Marketing and also an alumni of the university, having completed his Bachelor of Science, special degree in Marketing Management, as well as his Master of Science in management degree from the University of Sri Jayawardenepura while having obtained his PhD from the Swinburne University of Technology, Melbourne, Australia. Dr. Jayavikrama has over 15 years of academic and industry experience in marketing, branding and consumer behavior. He has published several research papers in reputed journals and presented at multiple international conferences. He has also been involved in several consultancy projects for public and private sector organizations. As the Dean of the Faculty of Management, Studies and Commerce, Dr. Jai Vikrama oversees academic and administrative affairs of one of the largest faculties of the University of Sri Jayawardenepura, including 12 undergraduate and 16 postgraduate programs across a plethora of diversified fields of management and commerce. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome for the address of the guest of honor, Dr. Dushan Jayavikrama. Thank you, Tarandu. Dr. Therese at the head table, distinguished uh, invitees, ladies and gentlemen. It is truly an honor to stand before you today as the guest of honor at the inauguration ceremony of PMARC 2023. I extend my sincere gratitude to the Postgraduate Institute of Management for extending this invitation to me. As we are well aware, the PIM holds a special place in our academic landscape as the prominent postgraduate institute in the field of management in Sri Lanka. Over the years, it has constantly consistently demonstrated a commitment to academic excellence and has played a significant role in shaping the future leaders of our nation. I'm particularly delighted to witness the effort taken by the PIM in recent times to integrate research as fundamental component of its culture. 
As we all know, the research conference is not just an event. It is a testament to the institution's dedication to advancing knowledge and understanding in the field of management. I applaud the efforts of uh, efforts undertaken by the PIM to integrate research component to in it, into its core, recognizing it as an indispensable element as a postgraduate institute. Having been inspired by very, very uh, thought-provoking keynote speech this morning, I thought I'll keep aside some of my uh, original ideas and uh, wanted to focus more on how we as a university and an independent uh, postgraduate institute can collaborate together to make this value creation and value delivery a reality as future strategic direction of the PIM. These are some of the uh, proposals that I would like to put forward for PIM uh, board to consider and for the future management and the future director to be uh, considered. While recognizing the significant contribution for, uh, made by Dr. Kalum Gamage in navigating the PIM journey during the hardest time in the uh, history that we know, I think now we have come back uh, to what we call uh, normal, again, within a very, very co uh, complex socio-cultural economic situation, how we can go ahead with value co-creation. Having uh, reflected on the points made by the keynote speaker, I think we have two major areas to focus on in creating the value. PIM as one of the leading uh, postgraduate institute in management in the Sri Lankan context has its own value creation agenda through the educational journey that it embarks on. And the other main challenge PIM as we heard even in uh, some of the future directions by uh, potential uh, candidates for the directorship. The other main challenge PIM has is through its uh, students, postgraduate students, how we can help the leaders of the Sri Lankan context to understand the value creation within their organizational context. These are two major priorities as I see. And, the, and for that, as a university, how can we, in collaboration, uh, to make it a reality? As our vice chancellor, very uh, visionary, in a very visionary way, elaborated in his speech, we are, as a university, very open to join hand with PIM as our postgraduate institute in the postgraduate institute in the area of management. And currently, we have eleven different faculties within the university through which we do various types of academic research to identify different values, well, new values, new creations. We have an innovation and invention council in the university where we try to get a lot of uh, you know, patents and uh, recognition for innovations, but we need these innovations to be commercialized. And who are we to uh, you know, have this process marketed or commercialized. Maybe it's to the leading people who are studying at PM who can bring these ideas to the market to see the possibility of creating or giving these new innovations a life in the real world. And the other thing is among these different faculties, we have different scholars who have researched with different theoretical angles. Being a management postgraduate institute, one area that we need to focus on, as I see, is the research agenda back with a strong theoretical foundation as to why and how innovations and uh, inventions or value creation is not happening in the Sri Lankan context, no matter how, how much we talk about it, how, how much we emphasize the concept at conferences and public talks of this nature. For some weird reason, it's not happening at the rate that we want it to happen. So for that, of of course, we need to have certain understanding why this is not happening. Maybe that is the agenda of PIM uh, doctoral and uh, PhD research. Having uh, pro provided them with solid uh, opportunity to explore this area through a theoretical research angle, maybe as uh, Professor uh, Dharmasiri mentioned and also the keynote speaker uh, clearly elaborated in his presentation, at the MBA level or executive education level, you can get more practical value creation 
in the organizational setting while some of the mba students can still focus on uh, studying why value creation is not happening or value delivery is not happening in the organizations as we expect so that way i think P we pim can uh, sort of focus on the real value proposition that no other postgraduate institute can focus on that will give the pim competitive edge because that is something that would add value to pim brand and that is where we can talk about pim with much more brand equity in years to come so having acknowledged the contributions of the founders and the previous directors of the pim the current generation and the future leadership of the pim can focus on this and then of course pim not only creates value in its own academic journey but also contributes the value creation of the country by producing future ready leaders at pim with that hope i thank everyone once again for giving me this opportunity to, to share my thoughts and uh, i would like to express our best wishes from the management faculty the largest management faculty of uh, the sri lankan higher education sector for pim uh, to have this uh, wonderful uh, initiation in conclusion i express my deepest gratitude for uh, acknowledging the importance of collaborating with the parent university and uh, let us all together celebrate the spirit of inquiry innovation and intellectual curiosity that defines pim uh, conference 2023 and may this conference be a catalyst for future advancements in the realm of management research and may it inspire a new generation of scholars to continue pushing the boundaries of knowledge. Thank you. Collaboration, win-win approach is indeed the way forward. And thank you so much, Dr. Dushan Jayavikrama, Dean of the Faculty of Management Studies and Commerce from the University of Sri Jayavardhanapura, our guest of honor this morning, for reminding us of that vital lesson once again. Now to recognize some of the special individuals who had joined us, spending their valuable time this morning, uh, and to identify the valuable contribution they have had towards this the inauguration session of this research conference. May I please welcome the conference co-chair, Senior Professor Ajanta Dharma Siri, and the Director of PIM, Dr. Kalum Gamage, Sena Kalum Gamage, to hand over the tokens of appreciation to our chief guest, the keynote speaker, and the guest of honor this morning. May we have the chief guest, Senior Professor Padmalal M. Manage, ladies and gentlemen, you are most welcome to applaud and recognize their presence and their contribution this morning. May we have the guest of honor, the guest of honor, Dr. Dushan Jayavikrama, Dean of the Faculty of Management Studies and Commerce from the University of Sri Jayavadhanapura. And also our keynote speaker for this morning's proceedings, Professor John Rees, the Pro Vice Chancellor International from the Northumbria University, UK.
Thank you very much, gentlemen, and thank you very much, uh, Senior Prasad Jansa Dharma Siri and Dr. Sena Kalum Gamake. They say life is all about the memories and the moments. So after the vote of thanks, which will be delivered shortly by the conference co-chair, Dr. Trevor Mendes, as we head down for the refreshments, I'm also reminded that there will be a group photograph taken at the entrance of uh, PIM. So as you go downstairs towards the canteen, uh, right from the, at the reception, just walk out and we have everything set up for a group photograph because after all, life, they say, is about the moments and the memories we create, which we go on to cherish. I'm, I would also like to remind very quickly what lies ahead of us today. After the refreshments, we have the doctoral colloquium happening in this room and that would be from starting from around 11 to 11.10 onwards. And uh, after that, at the same time, concurrently, we have a management research project, the stream one happening at uh, in the mirror room, which is in the second upper floor. We also have stream two of the management research projects happening in the Vidya room, which is in the third upper floor. And the stream three, would be of the management research projects and the management case study research projects would be happening in the Crescent room in the second floor as well. The afternoon sessions, stream four would be the management field research projects happening at the Ying Yang room in the second floor. The fifth stream will be the entrepreneurial skills research projects happening in the mirror second upper room, uh, the second upper floor, the mirror room. Uh, and we will also be having uh, the sixth stream, the management field research projects for specializing in the MBA in customs and the MBA in taxation happening in the Vidya room in the third upper floor, um, as well as the seventh stream, where the guided independent study projects, especially from the executive MBA and the manage the MPA EM, the master's program in education management, will be happening in the Crescent room in the second floor as well. And in the evening, 6 p.m., we have the industry dialogue happening at the main auditorium. Ladies and gentlemen, the attitude of gratitude plays a vital role in our nation, in our culture, and therefore very much so at PIM. Hence, to deliver the vote of thanks in this morning's proceedings, it is an absolute honor to welcome and invite someone who is joining us virtually talking about global events. Here we are experiencing one here at PIM. After all, at PIM, I believe, sirs, we walk the talk every day. We have Dr. Trevor Mendes, a strategist, a management consultant, as well as an academic. He has worked as a banker in multiple local and international global banks. He has also held the position of being the Assistant General Manager for Corporate Planning and Business Development for many prestigious organizations and prestigious financial sector institutions in Sri Lanka as well. I have with experience in many international bodies, including Fortune 500 organizations in New Zealand. He was a non-executive director and the chairman of the Strategic Direction Committee for Sri Lanka Insurance Corporation a few years ago, has served twice as an external consultant for World Trade Organization of the United Nations Geneva Office and having also served as a lead consultant for a research conducted by the Asian Development Bank in Sri Lanka. And he is joining us virtually from New Zealand. Please welcome the conference co-chair for PMAC 2023, Dr. Trevor Mendes, to deliver the vote of thanks. Thank you, Taridu. Research is the foundation for inter intellectual contribution in academia. Research and surveys help the corporate sector to formulate strategies to make informed decisions. Research leads to policy making in the state sector. Good morning. Vice Chancellor of the University of Sri Javadanapura, Senior Professor Padmalal, Dean of the Faculty of Management Studies and Commerce, University of Sri Javadanapura, Dr. Dushan Javadana, and also our keynote speaker, Professor John Reist, Pro Vice Chancellor of the Northumbria University of UK, Director PIM, Dr. Senaka Kalum Gamake, my co chair for PMARC 2023, 
Senior Professor Ajanta Dharmasiri, Dr. Asanga, Director Designate, and also members of the Committee for PMARC 2023, dear sirs, presenters, special invitees, learned professors, ladies and gentlemen. As the co-chair, it's my pleasure to provide vote of thanks for all the people who have immensely contributed for the success of this PMARC 2023. My dear friends, learned professors, members of the head table, I should say that PMARC 2023, if I compare it for a huge machine, this machine has three main cogwheels. Inauguration is one of the cogwheels, and then the presentations, which are going up to about 3.34 in the afternoon under seven different streams, is another major cogwheel. And the industry dialogue, which has been planned at the evening from 5.30 to probably 8.30, is the third cogwheel. So integrating and linking these cogwheels to the machine is a tedious task. So that's why I am here today to fervently say thank you for all those who have helped us to make this event a success. First, our sincere gratitude goes to Vice Chancellor of the University of Sri Javadanapura, Professor Padmalal, thank you very much, sir, for your presence here today. In fact, when Dr. Kalum invited Professor Padmalal for this event, I was there in front of him, and immediately he said, yes, I will come. So thank you so much, sir, for your presence here to grace this occasion. It's an encouragement. Then secondly, our sincere gratitude goes to Dr. Dushan Jawikrama, Dean of the Faculty of Management Studies, and Commerce for accepting our sincere invitation and coming here to grace this occasion. Thank you very much, sir, for your presence. And then Pro Vice Chancellor, Professor John Reist. I can remember when I spoke to Mr. Rasak to invite him, he was on a foreign visit. But surprisingly, within 24 hours, he accepted our invitation and said, yes, I'll be there. Thank you very much, Professor, for your presence here. And also thank you very much, Mr. Rasak, for your coordination and mediation. Uh, definitely your presence here would further strengthen the relationship between PIM and Northumbria University in the ensuing years. Then I would like to thank Dr. Senaka Kalum Gamake, who has been there since August 2023. The, during that period only, we started working on this conference for your continuous guidance during the last three to four months. Thank you very much, Dr. Kalu. Then my co-chair, Professor Ajanta, who has mastered actually organizing research conferences for many years at PIM. So your support was very valuable. Thank you very much, Professor Ajanta. Then also members of the PMARC committee who has been giving their maximum support virtually 100% in every aspect, as I said, especially to put these cogwheels into the machine and to integrate them successfully to ensure that the machine works properly. So thank you very much all the members in the PMAR committee, the administration staff led by Mr. Ranapura, then the IT staff, Sisira, Savan, and Ravindra, and also the publication department who had a difficult task with the convocation and all that, but still virtually they were working round the clock and all other staff members who have given their maximum support to make this event a success. Also, we thank a lot for our presenters, our students, learning partners who have come forward to present their research outcomes and also to add value at this research conference. Without them, there's no research conference. Thank you so much. And also our organizers of the industry dialogue, learned professors, my dear friends, this is how PIM demonstrates the impact of research to the corporate world. This is where in our research, I should emphasize, I should accentuate that this is how we demonstrate going beyond the theoretical implications 
to show the importance of managerial implications, practicality, as well as sometimes we go up to social implications, as well as ecological implications to show the impact of research to the corporate world. Because uh, we have about 86% student population who are coming from the corporate world. So we have clearly understood this. That's why we have added value by adding the industry dialogue for this research conference and going up to about 9 p.m. tonight. So thank you very much for organizing this. And finally, everybody who have helped us and our secretary, Ms. Nelum, who has been working uh, around the clock with so much of pressure. Thank you very much, Nelum. And finally, Tarindu, our able compere for every event. Thank you so much, Tarindu. And I wish you all the best presenters wish you all the best and have a productive day thank you very much all the way from new zealand thank you very much dr trevor mendis the co-chair of the pim annual research conference for your wonderful word of thanks and for recognizing the efforts by a plethora of different individuals that has gone in with uh, great commitment and dedication towards making this day, this uh, golden new chapter of the PIM research legacy, a success. With that, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the end of this morning's proceedings of the inauguration ceremony of the PIM Annual Research Conference 2023. Once again, a reminder, do join us for the group photograph at the entrance uh, near the reception after which the refreshments will be served downstairs at the cafeteria and the tracks, the different tracks for the different research themes will commence at the designated locations at 11.15 a.m. That is 30 minutes from now. Thank you so much and may you enjoy the rest of the day and work towards creating new knowledge to drive value creation to organizations through research. Thank you very much.